Nicola Sturgeon on the quest to keep the UK in the EU, and of course, on the war part with Theresa May, the Prime Minister. Pound is at an all-time low. Historically, the British pound reached an all-time high of 2.86 in December of 1957 and a record low of 1.05 in February of 1985. The likelihood of a so-called hard Brexit sent the pound plummeting to a fresh 31-year low, just above 1.27. Haiti emergency, over 1,000 deaths. However, there are reservations about the Red Cross. How do we give aid to Haiti? Trump versus Clinton. Seems like the campaign is pumping up because guess what? Donald Trump and Hillary, well, Donald is saying, I want to have a drug test for both of us. Black History Month. And we are joined today by Julian Hall, the entrepreneur who is a best selling author of three books, serial entrepreneur, consultant, and business coach. Julian also works with entrepreneurs to help increase performance and keep them in the top 5% of entrepreneurs who achieve long term success. His entrepreneur brand is based on his 20 years of experience in business and also the founder of Ultra Kids. Julian, welcome to In Review. Thank you very much for having me, Silver. You are the Ultraman. <laughs> the, the entrepreneur. Where, is it? Where are the kids? Where are the kids? The ultra kids. Ah, oh, I'll be seeing them later on this Fantastic. afternoon. Fantastic. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, Julian Hall is an entrepreneur. But Julian, a lot of things in the news, and one of the things about this show is that I like to grab persons who are not normally, they all talk about the news mm -hmm. somewhere along the line, and they're disgusted by things, but I want to put them on the spotlight to right. hear their views, you know? <laughs> and some people actually shy away from coming on the show. They think I'm going to, but I said, no, no, I just want persons to just feel free and flow. Now, Nicola Sturgeon um, at her party conference is like she's on a quest to keep the UK in the, in the, in, in, um, the EU. And, but at the same time, it's like she's on this war part with Theresa May. What's your thoughts about Nicola Sturgeon? Well, I guess the impact that Brexit has yeah. had and, <clears throat> you know, my company, we teach entrepreneurship, we're all yes. about business and there's a lot mm. of stuff around the startup community and how yes. Brexit has affected the startup mm. community and uh, there ha have been a couple of examples of companies that have had to file for administration already because of, already because of Brexit. And we're not even... And we're not even there yet. Article 50, and, yes. and this is the thing, right? And I think the key word here is stability. Yes. Now, uh, investors who fuel the startup community, uh, they are addicted to stability, yes. right? And when they are looking at um, investing in a company, mm. uh, they're trying to de-risk the profile. Yes. Because, you know, if you think about it, if you're an investor mm -hmm. um, and you've got the chance to increase your return by 10 times, yes. or you can just double it, yes. and then Brexit happens, you might think, well, actually, I didn't want to increase my return by 10 times, yes. but that's increasing the risk profile. Yes. Maybe I'll just double it this year. Yes. And there's um, a company who, had uh, raised um, three quarters of a million pounds in investment mm. in the UK. They had some German investors who were going to top that up. Yes. And uh, post Brexit, because we, they didn't know we were going to yes. leave, right? Yes, yes. Post Brexit, these German investors lost, lost confidence because they saw that as a sign of volatility in the market. So they decided to pull away. That then uh, caused that whole investment deal to collapse. Yeah. One of the biggest successes coming out of the UK, a company called TransferWise, yes. are now looking, they're now they're valued at a billion pounds, mm -hmm. they're looking at leaving the UK. As and, their headquarters. As their headquarters. And another um, really interesting statistic is the, uh, I think the Minister for, for Business and Finance in, in Berlin yes. said that post the, the Brexit announcement, she had a hundred Yes. UK companies inquiring about moving to Berlin to being headquartered, yes. right? So if, if we're thinking about this, this drain mm. of entrepreneurial talent from the UK, mm. for me, that's really concerning. Now, there's another side to the coin at the same time, because Theresa May at the party conference said Brexit is Brexit. And there's a point where the pound climbed slightly, right? And David Davis, in his, um, what he said is that because people are not getting the clear narratives and detail but now with Nicola Surgeon now coming in to say that I'll do everything within my power to keep Scotland in the EU and if the UK 
is going to leave the EU, that means to say we want a referendum. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that blowing up the whole aspect of stability? Because at the same time, Theresa May was setting out the pathway to say, this is it, the people have spoken, 17 million, yep. but now nobody is actually going that way. Everybody's now, so of course there's going to be a, a massive disability. In it. Well, this is the thing. So if we look at what happened, I mean, mm. just a couple of weeks ago in the Asian markets, yeah. uh, there was uh, a flash crash yes. where the pound against the dollar mm. went down to, I think, 1.1. Yeah. And now what's happening is it's going to be very difficult for us to control the fluctuation yeah. in yeah. the pound. Yeah. And again, that's causing some more instability. So, so if you bring it back yeah. to you know, to what's happening on the ground, that's going to affect us all. Well, I'm going to come, I'm going to come on to the, the pound factor later. But one of the things that um, Nicola Sturgeon said, referring to her 30-year membership to the party, she said she had never doubted that one day Scotland would separate from the rest of the UK. Is she trying to break? I mean, I saw BBC showing a, a, a girl actually trying to break <laughs> away with a picture. We're going to be joined by Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon. We'll talk to her about plans for a second referendum on independence. I'm sorry, we've uh, very clearly run the wrong pictures of that particular sequence. Is that a premonition or I don't know, they seem a little bit prophetic there, right? I mean, but I guess, you know, when you make such a, uh, a historic decision... Yes. Um, ..and you realise the, the, the backlash mm -hmm. against... Um, you know the uh, a choice yes as 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 some people would describe as catastrophic yes as um, as brexit is I think that it's um, potentially to her credit that mm. she's looking at, at, at other options yes. be it a referendum or yes. other ways yes to I guess put some sensibility yes. around what happened and again she, she has a point because as a, as a leader of a, a nation even though she's within the EU 62 percent what this is what it says here 62 percent of scottish voters voted to stay within yeah. the eu yeah so therefore she's got a point and of course any leader need to listen to the people so Absolutely. so fantastic so the pound now which we were yes. talking about at an all-time low this is what it said historically the british pound reached an all-time low of 2.86 in december of 1957 and a record low of 1.05 in February of 1985. The likelihood of a so-called hard Brexit sent the pound plummeting, as you're saying, to a fresh 31-year low, just above 1.27. As an entrepreneur, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, it's going to make uh, the UK, it's mm. going to make entrepreneurs in the UK, it's going to make doing business mm -hmm. more expensive because if we're having to buy in products, there's lots yes. of companies that need to buy in mm. products from outside of the UK going to make it more expensive mm. um, if you're thinking about even just basic things like yes. going on holiday right it's yeah. now more expensive the there was for a long time a, a premium that the UK enjoyed yes given the value of the pound and and we traded off that mm. um, that's now being eroded away and I think um, as I mentioned before this uh, idea of uh, very uh, fast growth startups yes. not wanting to be anchored in yes. the UK anymore yes. because of the uncertainty of what the, the future might hold, I, I think is a really challenging position mm. because um, you know, in the last you know, 10 years or so, yes. the UK has realised it needs to become more entrepreneurial. So there's been lots of initiatives yes. pushed forth by the government to encourage entrepreneurship. Yes. But ultimately, if the, um, if the economic climate doesn't provide an environment mm. to uh, you know, to, to kind of to, to foster yes. the the very uh, you know foundation yeah, yeah. of entrepreneurship, which was the, which is the economic stability, then you know um, it's something that we need to look at really carefully. Well, my mate in the states said to me, <clears throat> "Well, this is fantastic news for me because I can now come to the UK with my strong dollars now, which is very strong, <laughs> and the, and, the, and the euro. That's right. So therefore, people are now looking at. Hang on a second, but Julian, I always say this: uncharted territories." bring forth somehow uncharted, what should I say, challenges. But those uncharted challenges could not be uncharted opportunities? Well, this is the thing, right? You're an entrepreneur. Well, this you're is the, the thing. I mean, you're, you're flourishing in this. Well, this is the thing, right? So yeah. the other way of looking at it, yeah. and actually, um, 
when the Brexit announcement happened, yeah. I said to all of my colleagues, yeah. I said, there is an opportunity here. Yes. I don't know what the opportunity is necessarily, yeah. but there is an opportunity. And historically, whenever there's been movement, mm -hmm. politically, economically, um, socially, whenever there's mm. been movement in the market, that movement, the gap that that movement creates is what we call opportunity. Yes. Um, is it too early to determine exactly where those opportunities are? Yes. I think maybe. Mm. Um, are there definite opportunities? I think absolutely. Yes. Um, and I think that it's for, uh, for, for the entrepreneurial thinkers yes. out there. So not just the, the business people, but mm. the people who are thinking entrepreneurially, be it in the political or mm. business circles, to keep their finger on the pulse of where these opportunities yes. are. Yes, and, and that, that is really good. That is really serious because at the same time, you know, the pound is going up and down. Some who are Brexiters are saying, well, the pound has been overvalued a long time, so it is trying <laughs> to reach the level. And of course, the, the, the bemoaners, the bemoaners, those who are upset about leaving the EU, are actually saying, there it goes. Boris and all these idiots, you know, yep. messing up ourselves, creating this massive yep. instability. Yeah. But at the same time, they need to reach to a point where, but do you think the, the country can finally one day say, right this is a situation let us just work with it for a while do you think the country will ever come to that point the uk i think we've been doing that to be fair yeah. i think to be fair what's happened is after the announcement mm -hmm. we have been getting on with it i think yeah. in britain we're very good at getting on with things yes right the bulldog the, spirit the next morning everybody went to work yeah right everybody got on with their day-to-day -day lives because we um I think we're quite resilient. I yeah. think the British are quite resilient. Mm. And I think that um, we're not going to roll over. Of course, of course. And, you know, and die. Yes. We're not going to let any announcement stop us from, um, from progressing. And that doesn't mean to say they won't challenge absolutely. the decisions at the same time. No, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, but I think the way that we'll challenge it may be over a longer term. I think there'll be a long term mm. challenge yes. and pushback because, yes, uh, yes, we are resilient. Yes, mm. we're not going to get up and, you know, march outside, you know, um, number 10 the next chant day. Down, chant down Babylon one more We're time. not going to chant down <laughs> Babylon, right? Because we've got to go to work the next day, yeah, right? Yeah. But I think when, when the British do um, have an opinion, yes. they will stand firm, yes. they, they will push back. Now, tell me now, within the black community, uh, as you know, we operate, um, what is that message then to black entrepreneurs because I believe that we, we, we should not always just stand on the sideline and watch and sit in the stand but be players what would you say now to the black community capitalizing <laughs> honestly on this? I think this is I think this is an amazing opportunity because you have to you have to think about it right yes. um, we have the Commonwealth yes right and the Commonwealth is a great place for us to mm. trade and do business to build relationships and you know ironically it, you know mm. I've been doing a lot of business um, with the Commonwealth for mm. the last 10 years. So actually, whether we, uh, you know, take our attention away, because, you know, um, Europe isn't the, isn't the whole world. I mean, yes. you know, we, we do have a huge playing field um, of opportunity as entrepreneurs. Yes. And perhaps um, whilst, this, whilst there's instability over here and we're not sure there's too many question marks over Europe yeah. per se, um, you, we have to remember that most of our yeah. um, ancestry is really coming from the Commonwealth. So now yeah. the question is, is it time to, uh, to revisit some of those relationships? Right. So that means to say that Brexit, if we're not smart, and if we're smart, is an opportunity for the Commonwealth. Now, Julian, terrible thing which has happened with Haiti, over a thousand deaths, but one of the thing which is coming through a lot is about the aid. Yeah. And what is even striking is what people are saying and what Haiti is saying, reservations about the Red Cross and giving aid to them for Haiti. Because in the, during the hurricane period, billions, even through the Clinton Foundation, whatever, six houses, you know? What do you say? You know what, I'm, I'm shocked mm -hmm. um, and I'm dismayed. Mm. However, are, are we genuinely surprised mm. that some charities <clears throat> don't operate with the same level of transparency. Mm. Um, I think there has been a, a, a pushback yeah. against a lot of non-profit organisations, sadly, mm. um, in the last five to 10 years, yeah. where uh, the public aren't that trusting or don't agree yes. with the way in which the, the funds are spent. Mm. Now, 
this is a shocking revelation. I yeah. mean, nobody expected, you know, such such a huge amount of money yeah. to have been. Um, I, 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 it's not even that it's been misspent. It's, yeah. you know, it just hasn't gone towards the what cause. Did, yeah. And I mean, it, it's sad that it takes such a um, such a, a sad um, disaster, yeah. such as the one we've experienced that um, that, that we've, we've witnessed mm. with Haiti. To uncover something like that. Mm. So what are we saying? That if this didn't happen, we wouldn't have known. Wouldn't have known, yes. Right? And then how long would have the Red Cross and maybe other organisations have operated yes, yes. in such a way? And I, I just think <clears> it's a wake-up call that yeah. um, the, the whole idea of relief, yeah. how it's facilitated, and and I, and I guess the impact that mm. it that that it causes, it needs to be revisited. It needs to be yeah. looked again. That, that's interesting be because again. my my last show I mentioned about the the fact that is it that aid organizations relish disasters as a big payday because as it said here in the report ProPublica revealed that the American Red Cross basically raised a half a billion dollars to aid Haiti after it was devastated by a monster 7.0 earthquake in 2010 it had only built six houses out of the promised 700 by 2013 right the death toll reaches 1,000 grim right and so therefore now of course lots of different organizations are doing things i mean like in jamaica i know people are sending out there i think you heard that usain bolt as well yep yeah yep well 10 10 million apparently mm -hmm. um usain bolt is donating mm -hmm. 15 million to beyonce and, and yeah. jay-z potentially so that 10 million is that pounds Dollars, dollars. <laughs> Which Jamaican, Jamaican dollars. dollars, not not Zimbabwean dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but seriously, on a serious note though, but, but what what is the way then that organizations with the aid? I mean, you see persons chuggers or chuggers or whatever asking for money. People knock on your door sometimes, yeah, saying, oh yeah, 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 and they pull at your 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 heartstring. You see the different pictures out there. People are saying, give one pound to save Mary or whatever like that. But somehow you're just thinking that some of these guys or some of these persons are in these posh offices. You know, I heard that they're going in uh, air-conditioned vehicles in all these different places, while the people that really need the money are suffering. This is my view. We need to take a more entrepreneurial approach yeah. to how we provide aid and to how we support individuals in a charitable sense. Mm. You know, I grew up in the you know, mid 70s. Yeah. And I remember all of the aid that was raised for Africa. Yeah. Right. Um, whether it, you know, all the songs that were produced mm. or the, there was, I mean, that was the period, yeah. right? That we are the world. We, we are, are the world. Yeah. And that was the period when there was this whole, you know, rise yes. of let's look at Africa, let's send aid. And what, 30, 40 years later, yeah. what we've realized is that the aid has helped to, well, it's actually been mm. destructive yes. to a lot of those countries, right? Mm. Because it hasn't enabled them, it's disabled them, it's yes. caused them to become reliant on and aid. Dependent. And dependent. So it causes a cycle of dependency, and that cycle has caused a number of countries to spiral down. So what you're talking about is give a man nets instead of fishes. Well, and we've been the giving thing, them fishes right? for a long time. Let's teach them, we need to, <coughs> let's, let's, well, well I, th I think the problem begins at home, mm. right? So I think when in business, you look at uh, the person you're trying to benefit yes. and work out how can you best benefit that person, yes. Yes. right? Because if you don't benefit them, they're not gonna come back to mm. you as a customer or a client, mm. okay? When it comes to charitable aid, we need to think about what is the best way that our investment yeah. can actually help to benefit. Now, this is the thing, right? Um, charities are still a business model. They're yes. a charity, but they're still a business model. Now, your charity cannot exist mm -hmm. Ongoing, it, it, you you cannot keep giving somebody aid if you help them out of their situation, yeah. right? Because they then no longer need you. Yeah. Okay. But this is my thing. Um, there, there are enough causes around the planet to keep particular charitable organisations going. Yes. Now I don't know whether or not with with a conspiracy hat on, they're sitting there thinking mm. we cannot enable them too much because yes. cause they won't need us, right? And it destabilises our business model. Yes, yes, yes. Right. But then I'm saying, well, actually, look. 
you know, there are going to be different problems, mm. right? And um, and with any organisation, you cannot do the same thing yes. for decades. Yes. You've got to change, you've got to pivot yes. and evolve what you're doing. So, yeah. Otherwise, you'll become extinct. Fantastic. So, therefore, what Haiti needs now is some sort of strategic empowerment and entrepreneurship with all these funds which are going in to make sure that they can sustain themselves. Black History Month. Yes. I mean... Ultra Kids. Tell us a bit about Ultra Kids and what you do. I mean, and for Black History Month Drive. Tell us sure. a bit. Sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> Ultra Kids and Ultra Education, we mm. teach entrepreneurship in primary and secondary schools and in after school and weekend clubs. Mm. And our whole drive around that is it's about creating uh, the next generation of entrepreneurial yes. thinkers. Yes. I genuinely believe that if people thought more entrepreneurially, whether or not they're setting up their own business, yeah. whether or not they are in public or private organizations, mm -hmm. if, they, if they're bosses or if they're workers, then we would, as an economy, thrive. Mm -hmm. yes. And we'd be able to be more competitive mm -hmm. around the world. Um, and we will prepare young people yes. for what's to come. Now, the thing is, is that a, a huge percentage yeah. of the jobs that exist today will not exist in 20 years' yeah. time. So if you think about it, we're training kids in education for jobs that aren't going to be aren't going to be around. Now that's interesting because 20 years ago there was not Facebook. 20 Correct. years ago there was not Uber. Nope. 20 years ago there wasn't a hotel chain which actually owns no hotel. <laughs> Facebook yep. owns no content. Yep. Uh, no, created no content. Yep. Well, Uber yep, yep. have no taxes which yep. they own. 20 years ago. So 20 years ago then somebody is on the mark Absolutely. now to create something yes for 20 years time yes so we believe we're doing that yes awesome now entrepreneurial thinking people well, 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 what is that for us it means mm. being able to solve problems yeah right being able to think creatively yeah being resilient being able to communicate mm. and young people are leaving school and college educated but mm. not employable mm. so they can't maintain eye contact yeah. they can't put what they've learned into context with the yes. rest of the world they haven't done anything outside of, of education mm. that gives any relevance to what yes. they've learned yes. so, when, so when they sit in front of an employer yeah. they can't connect the dots between what they've learned now, and what's really happening now in, that's in interesting and that's going to be for another time julian but what's interesting is that will the teachers be able to understand when these new minds start to come in contact with them is are the teachers being trained to recognize a new generation as well because you are now infusing in young minds a new generation of thinking are you also infusing the teachers to recognize it's a them really to... good point <laughs> and this is the thing we are now training teachers yes. through cpd yes to deliver our program fantastic because That's what good. we're saying and there is no teacher that doesn't want a child who's a better problem yes. solver yes there's no teacher that doesn't yes. want a child who can't yes. think more innovatively yes. think more creatively yes. and actually once a child understands the relevance of what they're being taught yes. they're now far more engaged and no teacher doesn't want that fantastic and for black history month we're going to see more of that as well julian absolutely awesome now finally we cannot leave without talking about trump and the united states of america <laughs> right julian listen this is what trump said I, I found it this morning trump said and i'm gonna find it here just bear me one second because we got to touch on this trump said he has accused hillary clinton of being pumped up during their last debate saying that she should be both they should be both tested for drugs before the next one i mean i was listening to mr win he's one of those uh hotel muggles and he said Hillary Clinton is a very intelligent lady. Donald Trump, they're my friends. But what I'm not getting, what Mr. Wynn said, good conversation. I'm getting puffed up, airy fairy, WikiLeaks. I'm not getting good conversation. What's your thoughts about this mother of elections, Julian? Okay, now, <laughs> he's, not, he's, not, he's not wrong. Mm. There is no substance of content. Yes. But that's because, in my opinion, yes. the general populace of America yes. They want the show. Yes. They want the Punch and Judy puppet show. It's their reality moment. It's, the, it's, it's their reality TV moment. It's become a mode of entertainment. Yes. Um, it's become uh, something that the news pundits can grab and run mm. with. And I think it's because ultimately, um, maybe the general public don't really get the content. They yes. don't really get the policies. Mm. Maybe uh, that's not going to stir them up enough. Yes. Um, and and maybe un, when maybe mm. maybe just maybe mm. there is a, there is crossover maybe yes. 
you know, whoever gets in power, yes. the same things are going to happen. Same things are going to happen. The same things are going to happen, so, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, listen, we, we can't say it much longer on the Trump factor, but listen, may the best man or the best woman win the next yeah, election. Absolutely. Now, Gillian, finally, where, where can people find you and what's your next event, if you can just tell us? Yeah. Sure. So, if you go onto the web and you go to ultra.education, you can find out more mm -hmm. about our programs into primary schools, secondary yes. schools. We also work with a number of um, organizations, housing yes. associations, yes. and other public sector organizations whose beneficiaries are mm. families and children. Um, we run workshops after school yes. and on the weekend, helping to teach children as young as yes. six entrepreneurial thinking and entrepreneurial skills yes. so that it prepares them for, for today and, and for, for the future. And for the 20 year stand. There's, there's some key 20 year person in there make sure my son and my daughter is getting involved. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining the interview. And Julian, thank you so much for thank joining us. Thank you so much. Have a good week.